If you're a skinny guy who wants to look a little bigger, these tips will help. But quick disclaimer, there's nothing wrong with being skinny. A lot of guys and gals love this body type and honestly having lower body fat isn't exactly a bad thing. Yes, this video is about using style in a way that adds a bit of visual bulk to your physique, but you definitely don't have to dress in a way that enhances how you look or how other people think you look. If you're skinny and you wanna wear relaxed fit pants and oversized tees, go for it. You know, there's a lot of pressure these days for guys to look muscular and big, and I think it's ridiculous. I'm a pretty slim guy, but I'm healthy and I like the way I look and so does my wife. My point is you don't have to follow all of the advice that I give you in this video all of the time, but there's nothing wrong with understanding these principles and keeping these tricks in your arsenal so you can use them when you want to. Before we get into it, huge thank you to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. Whether you're low carb, smart carb, locale, pescatarian, vegetarian, they've got a delicious recipe for you. I went with the vegetarian meal kit, which had three meals, including this one that you're watching me attempt to make right now. HelloFresh gets their fruits and veggies directly from farmers, which means that it's even fresher than the stuff that you buy at the grocery store. I mean, just look how fresh these sweet potatoes are. Speaking of groceries, did you know their trip to the grocery store takes on average 41 minutes? That's like 36 hours every year just grocery shopping. HelloFresh gives you that time back and then some by cutting out meal planning, prepping, and grocery shopping so you can focus on the cooking and the best part, the eating. Plus, HelloFresh helps you eat more sustainably with these pre-portioned ingredients. I'm not gonna waste any food tonight, so I'm part of the solution. They're also committed to sustainable packaging, which is why their packing materials are almost entirely made from recyclable or recycled content. Basically, if you like saving time and you want tasty, healthy food that you can feel good about eating, like this rice bowl that made my wife think I could actually cook, HelloFresh is a great choice. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 12 Brock to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. One more time, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 12 Brock to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. Okay, let's talk about skinny guy style. So the number one tip, if you only take one thing away from this video, is to trim the fat. Basically, if you're a skinny guy, you should wear slim or skinny fit clothing. After all, skinny jeans on skinny legs are just like regular jeans. They might be skin tight on the average guy, but on a skinny guy, they just fit. Now this may sound counterintuitive. You might be thinking, won't skinny clothes kind of emphasize my physique? Shouldn't I wear baggier clothes to sort of cover it up? I understand the logic, but Baggy clothes actually have the exact opposite effect. Baggy clothes will emphasize your slender build while fitted clothing will actually make you look a little more built and athletic. Now, if you already own a bunch of clothes that are a little too big or a little too roomy for you, I recommend going to a tailor. For just a few dollars, you can get your shirts, jackets, and pants taken in for a slimmer fit. You can also get your sleeves tapered if your sleeves are a little too baggy for your arms, and you can get your pant leg openings reduced for a more tapered fit. Tip number two is to wear lighter colors. Now everybody has heard that dark colors are slimming, so it stands to reason that lighter colors will have the exact opposite effect. Lighter colors add visual weight and thickness to your silhouette. Try colors like white, tan, khaki, olive, light blue, and pale pink and yellow. These colors are especially great for spring and summer, but they can be worn all year round. And the great thing is all these colors work well together, so they're easy to mix and match. Tip number three is to wear invisible layers. So when you think about layering, you probably think of like a button up shirt underneath a sweater, but you can layer up in a less obvious way that will add just a little bit of subtle bulk to your frame. For example, if you're wearing a t-shirt, you can wear an undershirt or a tank top underneath. This has the added benefit of keeping you a little warmer during the winter time and during the summer, an undershirt will help soak up any sweat. If you're wearing a long sleeve t-shirt or a sweater, you can wear a crew neck tee as a base layer. I love doing this. It's very comfortable and it adds just a little bit of heft to my top half. 
And if you're wearing a long sleeve tee or a sweater, you can throw on like an overshirt or a heavy flannel shirt on top. One of my favorite combos is the long sleeve Henley under a flannel work shirt or a heavy button up shirt. This adds a lot of weight and thickness and warmth to your top half, so it's perfect for fall and winter. Tip number four, avoid V-necks and Henleys. Now I know I said I like wearing Henley shirts, but as a bottom layer, in general, long sleeve Henley shirts and V-neck t-shirts aren't the most flattering garments for skinny guys. I've yet to find a V-neck t-shirt that looks better on me than a regular crew neck t-shirt. Similarly, most Henleys, even slim fit Henleys, just don't look good on me. You know, I put it on expecting to be transformed into like Ryan Gosling, and it just doesn't work, especially when it's worn unbuttoned. I mean, unless you can find a very fitted Henley, I would probably avoid these if they're too loose they're not flattering at all. And that's fine because there's a better alternative and that's the polo shirt. With a sturdy collar, a more structured placket, and these are usually made from a thick piquet cotton, polo shirts are actually a very flattering garment on the skinny body type. They are great alternatives to regular V-neck t-shirts or Henleys. And if you do like long sleeves, try a long sleeve polo in either piquet cotton or merino wool. I prefer a fitted merino wool long sleeve polo, highly underrated shirt, especially for fall and winter. Tip number five is to wear jackets with collars. So for the same reason that a polo shirt works well on guys with kind of skinny necks, a jacket with a standing collar is gonna look really good. Now on the other side of the spectrum, we have something like a bomber jacket. So this doesn't have any sort of collar, it just kind of lays on your shoulders. And this isn't the most flattering type of jacket on very skinny guys. I'm not saying you can't wear these. If you like bomber jackets, just wear them. Don't worry about you know how they make your neck look or anything like that. But if you are concerned about it, try a jacket with a standing collar like this leather jacket that I'm wearing. This sort of collar provides a kind of backdrop for your neck and somehow it just de-emphasizes how slim your neck is. Some jackets like field jackets or some top coats or raincoats, they have collars that can be worn up or down. So if you have one of those, try wearing the collar up. Tip number six, try the French tuck. So if you're on the skinny side, a lot of shirts might just be too big for you. You know, many off the rack shirts, even in smaller sizes. On me, they're too long and a little bit too baggy. One quick fix is the partial tuck or the French tuck. This basically makes the shirt sit a little closer to your body and it exposes your waistline for a casual rugged look. The key to doing this the right way is to not just tuck it in directly in the center of your waistline. You wanna go a little bit off center, either to the right or the left. Also, don't go too far around with the tuck. It's really just tucking in just a little part of your shirt. You don't wanna go all the way around to the back. With a polo shirt, you can tuck it all the way around that little split in the side hem. That's kind of a natural stopping point. I've been doing this a lot lately with some of my shirts that are just a little bit too long or maybe a little too wide that I haven't gotten tailored yet or I haven't attempted to shrink in the wash and it works like a charm and I really like the look, so try it out. Tip number seven is to cuff your sleeves. Cuffing your sleeves tends to shorten and taper them at the same time, so it's great for either shorter guys or guys with very slim arms. It produces, in my opinion, a pretty rugged, masculine, almost blue collar look, and I really like it. I especially like doing this on t-shirts and short sleeve button-up shirts. You know, sometimes your sleeves will sort of tent out a little bit from your arm, and if you cuff them, it usually makes that uh, fit a little better around your bicep and tricep. It's very easy to do, and on your button-up shirts that have more like a stiff material, you can just cuff them and leave them like that, and so they're just ready to go when you put them on. Tip number... Tip number eight is to pad your ankles. So this next one is great for guys like myself who have skinny ankles who love to wear Chelsea boots. Oftentimes you'll find that there's too much space between the shaft of the boot and your ankle. You know, the shaft is just too wide. Sometimes this causes too much movement and heel slippage as you walk around and it can be uncomfortable or even painful. Here's how to fix it. Instead of throwing your old socks away, Cut the tips off so you just have like a tube of fabric. Fold it over itself two or three times. I like to fold it in half twice. And then you'll have a kind of a thick, stretchy band, almost like a scrunchie that you would use on longer hair. Put this band around your ankle, just above the bone, over your regular socks, before you put your boots on. This is gonna fill in some of that space between the shaft of the boot and your ankle, and it's gonna make it a lot more comfortable to wear as you walk around. I know it seems kind of weird, but just try it. 
I think you might be surprised. And my last tip is to wear smaller accessories. Now this is especially true with watches, ties, and sunglasses. Skinny ties, for example, may go in and out of style, but they always look good on skinny men. Don't take it too far. Don't wear those like comically skinny ties that are like one inch wide, but a slim tie is always gonna be a good choice if you're a slender guy. Similarly, if you have a narrow face like I do, you're gonna look best in narrow sunglasses. If you're not sure how to find out if you have a narrow face, check out my video about choosing the right sunglasses. It will clear everything up. And finally, if you're a skinny guy, chances are you also have slender wrists. Now, many watches are gonna be way too big for your wrist. Really anything over 40 millimeters might be too big. So the key is to stick with smaller watches or watches with smaller dials. My wrists are about six and a quarter inches around and I love wearing watches that are anywhere from 34 to 38 millimeters in diameter. Anything bigger than that looks a bit oversized on me. You know, 36 millimeters is a sweet spot. There are plenty of great watches in this size range so don't feel like having smaller wrist limits your options. You can still wear dive watches or dress watches, really whatever style you want, there's going to be a watch for you. And that's it. I hope this video gives you some ideas uh, when you're putting together your next outfit. Like I said at the beginning, there's definitely nothing wrong with being a slim guy. You know, the most important thing is that you are fit and healthy and happy with your body. It doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks about it. If you have any questions or any other tips, leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, stay stylish.